Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel, or, you know, welcome to it if you haven't been here before. Anyway, so, as you've seen, there hasn't been any new Gus Clan updates. Unfortunately, my computer, it's been dying slowly the past couple of years, and lately it's decided to just basically take the plunge. Yeah, so I had to wait a while to get a new computer before I could keep going with Clan Gen. And, well, I finally got it, and so we're going back into it. However, I have had to start with a new clan. Yeah, I think it's actually been, it's for the best because I have learned more. I have seen more challenges and different things like that. So uh, with this clan, I decided to make things a bit more interesting. So with this clan, like this is inspired from other people I've seen on YouTube and also from the Discord server and everything. Um, but this clan basically is females only. All Toms uh, have to leave, either once they reach uh, six moons old, or if they're found and brought back to camp, then as soon as they're healthy, then they have to leave. So that is the general basis of this clan. Um, yeah, so with that, let's just get right into it. Tensions with other clans were quite high until finally a war broke out between them and Cavern Clan. Squirrel Star appointed different cats she trusted the most at the head of her different groups to watch over the clan. Unfortunately, luck wasn't on their side. One border patrol got into a fight with the other clan and nearly all the cats died. Only one survived and returned to camp to report the incident. Another patrol went hunting and several days later, maybe even weeks, they brought back little to nothing. Yet another patrol confronted several rogues and most died at their paws. Due to this much loss, Squirrel Star started to believe they were cursed, or rather, that the Tomcats brought darkness to her clan. Every patrol had been made up mostly of Toms, or Toms had been leading them, and each one resulted in death in some way. Only the patrols that contained majority of she-cats seemed to do well. So, after a particularly harsh leaf bear where the remaining Toms were killed due to lack of food, Squirrel Star announced that from that point on, no Tom Cats were allowed in their clan. If kits were born, the Toms would be able to stay until they re reached six moons of age, but then would have to be sent off. And thus, Cavern Clan became a she cat only clan, the first of its kind amongst all the clans that lived around the mountains. Alright, so first up we have Squirrel Star. Due to the loss that her clan has suffered, she starts to develop. Uh, paranoid thoughts. She spends a fair bit of time to herself at the start of the year, not wanting to be around many cats. Despite this, Crocus Stripe hangs around her a fair bit and ends up confessing she has feelings for the leader. Squirrel Star isn't in a place to be able to return the feelings and turns the other she-cat down. They still manage to remain close friends despite this. Shortly after, she finds the medicine cat dead near one of their borders. Furious, she blames the other clan for the death, but has no proof to be able to do anything about it. She vows to watch over her clan and do her best to prevent any more deaths. Not much else really happens for her until near the end of the year. She's approached once more by Crocus Stripe, and this time, they do become mates. While in this new happy state, the two stumble across three newborn kits next to their dead mother. Crocus Stripe manages to convince Squirrel Star to adopt these kits with her, despite them all being Toms. A few moons later, her mate develops White Cough. Crocus Stripe tries to convince her to allow the kits to stay in the clan past the six moons restriction, where, which leads to an argument. Soon after, her mate dies from her sickness, leaving Squirrel Star resenting the kits even more. She believes they brought the death uh, onto their mother and now caused her mate to die as well. She snaps at them frequently and leaves them to the queen in the nursery to raise them, wanting nothing to do with them anymore. She ends the year in a bitter and sad state, grieving the loss of her mate. So here's a little red fleck. She starts off the year as a kit and tends to play rough a lot that leads her to being bruised up quite a bit. She is close to Crocus Stripe, who basically raises her due to her own mum dying in one of the many fights from, uh, before things changed in clan, in the clan's way of life. As an apprentice, she does everything she can to make her mentor and clan proud. Unfortunately, she doesn't get along very well with her mentor, and they're often seen arguing. Despite their quarrels, she still manages to become a warrior without issues. 
Being raised in the new ways of the clan and having the leader around her frequently due to the closeness between her and Crocus Stripe, she is growing up leaving in Squirrel Star's new way of life for the clan. It's thanks to her loyalty to the leader that when the deputy is killed, she's appointed the new deputy. She's the youngest deputy the clan has ever had, but is determined to do her absolute best for the clan. And here we have Heartpaw, the first and so far only female kit born in the clan after the new rules were put in place. She's immediately doted on more than her brothers and shown favoritism by the leader. She's excited when a newcomer is brought into the clan and is eager to show him how to build the best nest and starts to really admire him as she hears about how he stood up to his evil clan leader. It ends up leaving her with a lot to think about as she nears becoming an apprentice. Upon reaching six moons, she decides she wants to become a medicine cat since her clan has none and isn't keen on all the fighting. Star Clan approves this and are the ones that will teach her the ways of the medicine cat. She's sad when her brothers and Frigidtail are exiled and secretly brings herbs to them when she's able to as they stay close to the clan borders for the time being. She doesn't see them often, but looks forward to every moment she does get with them. Next up is Pebble Sprout. She starts off the year by spraining her paw. Because of this, she snaps out at the one and only kit when she gets under paw and looks forward to getting a bit of a break from her duties. She's getting older, so things wear on her a bit more. Shortly after, she announces she's expecting kits and wastes no time in taking up refuge in the nursery, eagerly awaiting their birth. Despite this, she does take some time out of her day to tell the apprentices about a few hunting techniques when she sees them struggling a bit. She ends up having a litter of three kits that are all healthy. She names them Heart Kit, Flail Kit, and Glade Kit. Unfortunately, Flail Kit and Glade Kit are Tom's, and the leader reminds her of the new rule that Tom's must leave at six moons of age. She's sad about this, but decides she will love them as much as she can until that point arrives, and teach them a few things before they have to leave so that they have the best chance of survival. Towards the end of the year, she fights off an eagle to keep her kits safe before escorting them out of the clan territory. Doing so was harder than she expected, so after a few weeks of returning to duty, she decides it's time to retire. This causes a leader to complain about her, which she overhears, leaving her in a rather unpleasant mood at the end of the year, but despite this, returns to the nursery to look after the leader's adopted kits after Crocus Stripe's death, as she knows Squirrel Star won't care for them. These next three are uh, kits that were at the very end of the year, so I'm just doing them all together at once. So we have Tweak Kit, Tumble Kit, and Slate Kit. Uh, these are the three kits that were found by Squirrel Star and Crocus Stripe, and their mother was a kitty pet who got lost in the woods and died giving birth to them. Tweak Kit likes to cause trouble. He will steal his siblings' prey and pull pranks or is seen racing around the camp clearing. Often ends up with bruises due to his antics as well. Tumble Kit is a bit more shy than his brothers and will hide from other cats when he gets a bit overwhelmed. Also tried to sneak out of camp once, but was caught before he got very far. Despite being so young, he understands the rules of how his brothers and him will have to leave the clan once they're six moons old. He doesn't think this is fair and wants to become leader so that the others will have to listen to him so the rule can be removed. Slate Kit, though, loves to listen to Crocus Stripe stories and often is daydreaming of grand adventures. He doesn't really want to grow up, but does find the path of a medicine cat quite interesting and tends to be found following after Harpaw, asking lots of questions. And now we are on to the exile cats. So we have Frigid Tail. He was deputy of Tansy Clan, but left as the leader became a tyrant. He was injured due to standing up against the leader and sought out refuge with Cavern Clan. He hoped to join after getting some healing. He was allowed to stay and recover, but told he will have to leave once he's healthy enough. He's disappointed, but understands. Despite the news of his stay being temporary, he can't help but be pleasantly surprised as the kits bring him gifts for his nest. When feeling well enough, he tells them stories of his life and what other clans are like. After two moons, he's finally healed up. He hoped to have convinced Squirrel Star by that point to allow him to stay, but it didn't work out that way. So he leaves with their two youngest Toms, promising the boys that he'll teach them everything he knows about how to survive outside of the clans. Flailpaw. He is Harpaw's other brother. And uh, he 
tends to be rather full of himself and show off at every chance that he gets and brags about things he sees as, he sees as important that he's done. This often leads to other cats being annoyed with him, including Crocus Stripe, who tends to love everyone. If he isn't bragging about things he's done, he's complaining about the leader and her unfair rules. He's glad when Frigid Tail shows up and hopes that it's a sign of the leader changing her mind and would allow the Toms to stay. Unfortunately, in the end, is kicked out once he reaches six moons. It's a bitter moment for him and causes him to resent the leader even more along with his mother and other she-cats for allowing this to happen. The only one he isn't bitter towards is his sister. Next we have Gladepaw. He is one of Heartpaw's brothers. Uh, he loved to hear stories and was often found listening intently to any cat who was willing to tell him stories. Myths, legends, or recent events, he doesn't care. He'll listen to all of it. When Frigid Hale showed up, he became even more excited at finally meeting an older Tom. Uh, he joined his sister in greeting the stranger and even brought him feathers for his nest as a welcoming gift. He doesn't really get up to much as a kid and eventually gets exiled with his brother and the older Tom once he reaches six moons of age. He's confused as to why this is a rule, but is glad that they have Frigid Tail to rely on for help in navigating the territory beyond the clans. Here we have Fawnfur. She is our Star Clan guide. Uh, we have now entered the cats who have passed away. Uh, anyways, Fawnfur was a medicine cat when she was alive. And, you know, took great care of her clan, was very charismatic. Everyone loved her. Um, I don't know too much about what her role was like, you know, prior to all these cats being in the clan. As she has been in Star Clan for many, many moons. Uh, but yeah, so she just hangs out there, guiding every cat where they need to go. And that's basically all there is really to her as, as the guide. And now we enter the cats who have died. First we have Brindlespeck. She likes to... She likes to listen in on other cats to find out what all the juicy gossip is. She also enjoys hanging out with different cats and getting to know them better as well. She doesn't really get up to much and mostly keeps her head down and just does her job as the medicine cat to the best of her abilities. Unfortunately, she sometimes stays out in the hot sun longer than she should when searching for herbs and develops heat stroke at one point. Halfway through the year, she's found some herbs near the Petal Clan border. While gathering them, a patrol from the other clan find her and ask for some. She turns them down as the clan needs the limited supply. After that, she wakes up in Star. She wakes up in Star Clan. She watches over the clan as closely as possible from her place in the stars, and sends messages to Squirrel Star as she thinks is needed. Next up we have Sprout Feather. She tries her best to help the clan thrive. However, despite her loyalty and dedication to the clan, she doesn't make a very good mentor. She's often seen arguing with Redpaw and becoming quite exasperated by the young she-cat. It's even led to her being chastised. Despite her issues with her apprentice, when Pebble Sprout has her kits, Sprout Feather takes a liking to them and even winds up with one of them following her around at different points. She even provides a listening ear when it's needed and gives advice. Towards the very end of the year, she heads out of the camp on her own to do a bit of hunting. She ends up finding a burrow, and when she goes to inspect it, is suddenly attacked and killed by a badger that took up residence within it. And here we have Fierce Paw. She didn't live very long, so not a whole lot happened with her. She tended to refuse orders as she has a strong sense of right and wrong and didn't agree with the leader's decision of banning Toms from the clan. But as an apprentice, there was nothing she could do. She refused to do a few exercises during training due to the risk in them. However, she eventually caves and does do what she's told one day. It's also by following her mentor's instruction that she winds up dead. She's sad she didn't get a chance to become a warrior and try to help her clan heal from the hard times they'd gone through, but now keeps an eye on things in Star Clan. Towards the end of the year, she's especially keeping an eye on the Dark Forest cats, as she has a bad feeling about it. And lastly, we have Crocus Stripe. 
She's a natural mother. She basically mothers all the cats in the clan, regardless of their age, though she is often seen with apprentices or kits the most. She doesn't agree with Squirrel Star's choice of making the clan Tom free, but she knows it's just the pain of all the loss and hardship talking, so she stays by her, hoping to eventually help guide her back to what she thinks is the right path. Despite her first confession to the leader being rejected, she isn't bothered by it in the slightest and continues to remain at Squirrel Star's side as best she can. Her second attempt is successful and the two become mates and find a few kids that she's able to convince Squirrel Star to adopt with her. She sees this as a good sign that perhaps the ban on Toms will eventually be lifted. However, towards the end of the year, she gets sick with white cough. Her mate hasn't made the progress she's been hoping for as she simply tolerates the kids for her sake. She can feel her life ebbing away and makes one final desperate attempt to appeal to her mate to allow the adopted kids to remain in the clan. When she finds herself in Star Clan, she's disappointed to see Squirrel Star practically abandon the kits once more. So yeah, that sums up our first year in Cavern Clan. Uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, feel free to uh, like the video and subscribe to see any new updates coming around. Um, again, I'm sorry that it took so long for uh, this video to come up after the last one. The uh, computer difficulties are not fun to deal with when they pop up when it's an older computer. Anyways, uh, updates should be starting to get a little more regular again. And now we have a new clan to watch over and see how things go. And I hope you'll join me for the ride that I'm pretty sure that this one's going to give us. Hope you all have a great day, night, whatever it is for you. And see you again next time.